Hello, it's time to learn how to put on your Polish MP5 military surplus gas mask. My name is Eliza. If you're very lucky, your gas mask came in one of these. This is its holder. It's a very nice bag. Here's the mask itself. This is a size four. It's very small. But the good thing about these gas masks is that I have tried on every size between four and one, one being the largest. They all fit me and I can form a seal on all of them. So it doesn't really matter what size you get, you can probably make it work. If you're very lucky, you may have gotten some accessories. This is a shoulder strap, which I will show you how to use later. And we also have a drinking straw, because if you have to go through tear gas for 45 minutes and you need some Red Bull, there you go. And the last thing in the kit, of course, is the filter. Now the filter will either come sealed in plastic or, like this one, has been opened and possibly have this, has been used once or twice. You can see I'm taking the plugs out here. There's a plug on this side and on this side. I have tested all of the gas masks in the batch that this video refers to. And all of these gas masks have worked at filtering out the smell of vinegar. It's my understanding that molecules of vinegar, the stuff that you can actually smell, are a lot smaller than the molecules of pepper spray and CS gas, which is what you'll find in a protest. So here we go back to the filter. This is a standard uh, 40 millimeter threading. Fits onto the mask like that. Righty tighty lefty loosey. Don't over tighten it, obviously. But there you go. This is the voice box. This is your exhale port. And this is where you will plug in your drinking straw if you're lucky enough to have one. Since the back of the mask is going to hit about here on your head, it makes sense if you have long hair to pull it back. If you're going to a protest action, it's a good idea to put all of your hair away, both for identification purposes and because cops can and do grab people by their hair and pull them. So put it all away in a bun. I'm just going to put it in a ponytail for now. So there are two different versions of this mask. This appears to be the older version. It has difficult to use uh, straps here. I'm not really sure what to call these. Uh, this buckle is just a little rectangle of metal and it is pinching these straps which have numbers on them, I think indicating the number of inches on your head or perhaps a size that I don't really know how to read. It's really hard for me to move these straps around and adjust them uh, with my hands. I'm just not strong enough. So because these straps were so difficult for me to adjust on my own, first I tested to make sure that they were metal and not plastic, then I went and got a metal tool. This is an Allen wrench. You can do anything you want. Careful not to cut yourself. Wrangle it under the edge and just bend it upwards a little bit. So maybe you can see that I have bent that buckle upwards a little bit. This loosens it and makes it easy to mess with the sizing. It's really important to adjust your sizing before you go to the protest. I cannot emphasize this enough. You also need to put your gas mask on and wear it around the house for a little while. Having a gas mask on can be really claustrophobic. It can be scary, and particularly if you have breathing problems like asthma or anything like that, allergies even, you need to test and see if you can deal with it. Because you don't want to be panicking in the middle of a CS gas cloud, putting your mask on, freaking out, etc. So please try at home before you go out. So now we've got the straps adjusted. I have showed you how to loosen the little buckle and now I'm going to put this sucker on. It goes over the top of your head. Hi, church friend. Whoa. <laughs> friend. I don't really need your help with this. The dog isn't part of it. You don't need a dog to put a gas mask on. Oh. So 
then you have these two loose straps. This is a little tricky. You need to put them onto the hooks on the side of the mask here. There you go. Okay, I can breathe. I feel pretty secure. The dog is bothering me, but I can't smell him. And that's important. It means that my filter is working. But before you start relying on your gas mask, you need to test the seal. And the way that you test the seal is by blocking your breath input and then sucking inward haha, hard so that your mask sort of implodes onto your face. You will be able to feel it. It'll feel like a giant suction cup. So let's try it. Sealed over the filter. Works great. So like I said, this is the smallest size. It fits me. My head is pretty small. It would probably fit older children as well. To take the mask off, just unhook, and there you go. Sometimes I have worn my mask on top of my head if I thought I was going to get tear gassed again but needed to take it off for a while. That's not really secure. A better way to do it, and you can do it any way you want, attach some sort of a strap, ribbon, piece of a shoelace even works securely to the gas mask anywhere. You can tie it around the filter connector. You can attach it anywhere that does not interfere with the edge of the seal here. Nothing can go here. So attach the string and then make it so that if you take your gas mask off like that, it can hang around your neck or on the front, either way. You want all of your gear attached to you at all times as much as possible because cops love destroying things. And if you get up and run and your stuff is not attached to you because you have been grenaded or there is an emergency of some kind, uh, you want your stuff attached to you so that it will come with you wherever you're gonna run. We can fiddle with the straw. This is a bonus thing. Not everybody's mask is gonna come with a straw. It's pretty self-explanatory. These are covers for the, uh, the little two. I don't know the official nomenclature for any of this stuff. Oh, it fell right out. I am fucking this up somehow. Oh, I got it. So this T-shaped part is what actually goes into the mask. And it clicks and locks in so that it can't be yanked out. If you want to use this while you're wearing the mask, there is a little noodle in here. It's kind of hard to see, but this can be rotated inside the mask so that it can actually poke you in the mouth while you're walking around. You can rotate the drinking nozzle inside the mask by turning it on the outside, which is really convenient because it means that you don't have to take your mask off to adjust this thing. I usually have mine out of the way the truth is about gas masks and protests is that you'll probably wear this thing once for 45 minutes and then never again. That's just kind of how it goes. So I'm going to turn it so it will face my mouth and I'm going to try drinking with it. So this bag is very well designed. It has three points of contact with your body. This thing, which attaches to, again, if you're lucky, not everybody's kit comes with these, but you may have a shoulder strap. We're going to attach these. You can also use any detachable strap from any bag that you own, or you can make your own. Okay, so now your bag's down here. The second point of contact is a belt. 
the belt goes through these loops. I recommend carrying as much weight during a protest on your hips as you can. But the shoulder strap is a good stabilization piece because as you're running around, this thing is gonna wiggle. So the third and final strap is this thing, which can be tucked out of the way on the front of the bag. But when you are having it in use, wrap it around your thigh. This one's a little big for me. There you go. So that three points of contact, shoulder, belt, and thigh. I recommend carrying it a little bit back on your butt because otherwise it's gonna be in the way of your arm. The last thing I wanna say is that before you go into the protest, take the plugs off of your filter Screw your filter onto your mask. Then put it into the bag like this. That is unless you're wearing it around your neck. So you can take it right out and put it right on and it's all ready to go. When you're at home, unscrew the filter, put the plugs back in. And uh, if you got exposed to tear gas or pepper spray, you should give this thing a very thorough clean. If you wore it at all, you should clean it because your body oils will eventually degrade the rubber. But we're talking like far future, you know, 20 years, that kind of thing. Still, it's best practices and you want to take care of your gear. Look how secure that is. That's not going anywhere. Cut. This is the gas mask video. I'm gonna teach you how to snort a booger through your gas mask tube and then pocket at a cop. If you'd like to see my dog, here he is. Church Graham. He's very large. He's a big boy. Yes, he is. No kissing face. This is how to put on your gas mask so that you don't look like a dickhead.